morning. Uh, I'm Dennis Tappan. Uh, I'm an engineer with Intellitech. David said I'm working on the Job Master uh, integration. Um, as part of our industrial maintenance program, uh, Job Master ends with a capstone project, which I'm going to show you guys first. Uh, this is the 1600 maintenance cells. Um, project's designed to give students the ability to apply all the other skills they've learned up to this point throughout the industrial maintenance program. Uh, 1600 comes as a kit of parts and through a series of industry-like job orders, uh, standard specifications, schematics, etc. Uh, the instructor will guide the students through the assembly of this unit. Um, the students are going to start off with building the frame and installing the electrical infrastructure which includes uh, a master uh, safety disconnect for the instructor, uh, a standard breaker panel, and then a series of cable trays and wireways to do all the power distribution. The input power to the unit is 223 phase, uh, which gets distributed through the master breaker panel into a station transformer that transfers that power to the 120 volt control voltages needed to run the rest of the system. So the students are going to uh, put in that infrastructure going to install safety disconnects, which can all be uh, all have lockout tag on capabilities uh, for each of the uh, technology enclosures for the rest of the system. In addition to that, they're going to be installing uh, all the lighting, uh, which includes high bay, low bay, fluorescent, outdoor flood lighting, hazardous pendant lighting, through a series of different types of switches and uh, higher voltage uh, industry lighting contactors that are uh, familiar uh, on the plant floor. Like I said before, all the uh, all the power all has lockout tagout capabilities, uh, including lockout tagout on the main brake coming in, and again, the instructor has a safety disconnect. What's lockout tagout? Lockout tagout is a, a OSHA prescribed procedure on um, locking out or tagging out uh, power sources. In this case, I was particularly talking about electricity, where uh, you would have, let's say, either an actual padlock or a tag. Oh. And this is an example of a tag that we provide with a kid, um, where uh, an operator will lock out and tag it, name it, date it, possibly write remarks as to why they locked out and tagged it out, whether it's going to be something for routine maintenance, or there's a scheduled problem. But not just electricity, in the case of the 1600, we also have a lockout tagout capability on uh, the pneumatics coming to the air supply coming in to run the pneumatics. Again, compressed air is a, is a uh, stored energy source. Whenever you're doing maintenance on equipment, you have to make sure you lock out and tag out all energy sources for safety purposes. So once the uh, students have uh, put in the electrical infrastructure and built the frame, then they'll continue uh, to install the rest of the components to run a continuous process manufacturing cycle. In this case, there's a Mac parts feeder that runs batches of parts through a simulated paint baking cool cycle that's PLC driven. So they'll begin by installing, um, right now we have an AC motor with an electric brake uh, that runs through a chain drive. Uh, the chain drive here has a, a safety disconnect limit switch that gets wired into the start-stop station, uh, start-stop circuit. In addition to that, there's several e-stops, two in the front, there's one in the back, along with a couple of other start-stop control stations uh, for manual loading and unloading of the uh, conveyor belt. Once the students have the conveyor belt installed, have the, uh, the motor and the chain drive installed, they'll install the pneumatics, they'll install the parts feeder, and then they'll begin to wire all the inputs and outputs that go into the PLC that runs the continuous process cycle. This right here is a small IDEC PLC. Uh, it's 120 volts, 24 volt inputs um, that run all the, that take in all the sensors and, and output uh, all the uh, components that go through the paint bacon cool cycle. There's a proximity sensor. I'll uh, start this up for you guys to look at. There's a proximity sensor that detects whether or not this part is present in the magnet feeder. <coughs> Excuse me. And then going into the tunnel is a fiber optic or electric sensor that counts the parts and through a TLC program that the students will have to write themselves. It counts the batches of parts and as parts go through, you see the cycle begins. You can hear the paint coming on, you see the indicator light flashing, the cycle moving. That's on a timer, it paints for so long and then it moves on to the next batch. You'll see when the next batch goes through, it's continuous processing. So it'll run the paint cycle, and it'll run the bake cycle 
And you can actually, uh, you can see through the small port on the side of the tunnel, you see a simulated set of lights come on and say, yes, paint is on and bake is on. Uh, again, from simulated uh, paint and bake on the inside and then the indicator lights here. Third step in the process of the cool cycle, you see paint bake and you see the cooling fan all come on at the same time. Again, the PLC is running all the outputs, both the lighting and the actual motors running, uh, and the lights running, etc. In addition to uh, the basic uh, system that I just explained to you now, uh, the students also will have the option of adding on a few more motor control technologies. Currently, we're running an AC motor with an electric brake uh, to control the conveyor. So it's just start, stop, on, off. Uh, we also have a variable frequency drive that can be added on in lieu of just having an electric brake. Um, that can control XL, D cell, forward and reverse, coasting, and those kind of things uh, to give more advanced control to the conveyor belt. <coughs> in addition to that, in lieu of using an AC motor, we also have a DC motor that I have mounted down here for demonstration purposes. Again, the students can control XL, D cell through a regenerative uh, DC drive, forward and reverse, and those kind of technologies. So they can get familiar with integrating those types of technologies into this motion control system. Once the uh, student has everything integrated, is up and running, the uh, second half, so to speak, of the 1600 is the fall insertion package. The instructor has the ability, once everything is wired in, to go into and hardwire from this, from this enclosure uh, fault that can either be hardwired in at, at point of when things come on, or have control off of a set of relays, either time delay, on off. Uh, intervals uh, to simulate intermittent faults or some kind of breakdown in the system that students have to troubleshoot. Um, some of the relays can be programmed to run off a remote switch so the instructor can turn them on. And the indicator right here. Or the instructor can just turn them off, off from the wireless uh, remote without the students knowing. And again, once the students become, uh, have the ability to read the schematics, uh, to install all the components, uh, and get their you know, their hands dirty going through all the exercises, they also get uh, the ability to work on the troubleshooting skills with the problem solution method. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, yeah. How? Now, this is a capstone, so they've seen all these technologies in different parts somewhere else in our curriculum. Yep. So, and this comes, I mean, how does this come? Is in a box, and they just build up the it, frame and everything it, it, it comes out. It comes on in. It, it comes in multiple boxes. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we, we ship some in December. Uh, we ship it on several pallets. We we leave everything packaged uh, as it comes from the, our manufacturing supplier. That way, they have in addition to our content, they have all the manufacturer's reference materials. You know, whether it's a user's manual or some kind of installation guide for that particular component. Because when the students get to the shop floor, that's what they're going to have. It's going to be, hey, you have to go fix this or install this. Well, how do I do that? Right. They're not necessarily going to have, uh, you know, a learn made style content. They're going to have what comes from the manufacturer. So do they then yeah. take it down and put it in the back of the box, hopefully, so yeah. the next students get the same experience? Our, our feedback from Bob Taylor is he's had uh, some instructors tear it all down. He's had some instructors tear off all the electronics and just leave the frame up. He's had some instructors do somewhere in between where they've, they've just taken down certain Parts, like just maybe just just take the PLC out and have all the inputs and outputs and everything already pre-wired, and they just have to wire the PLC and just the PLC part. Yeah. It's just dependent on what the teacher's running for the course, uh, whether or not the students may or may not have certain strengths and areas and they want to work on weaknesses. Um, it's really up to the instructor and the school to what they want to do. The intent is that it gets torn down uh, and they build it back up. The enclosures themselves, all the. Uh, all the components are mounted to removable subplates, subpanels. The subpanels themselves are pre-drilled here at the factory uh, so the students can mount get the ability to mount all the components and then they wire them up. So they don't actually have to go through the engineering part of figuring out the deploy, their experience with working with the hardware or wiring point to point. The enclosures themselves, as far as placement for the switches and the lights, we do that here uh, in the factory as well. Again, we don't want them to have to go through all that factory.